So before I start this video, I just want to give a shout out to Cyprian, Miguel, and Benny, who uh, recently became YouTube members um, to my channel. I really appreciate the support. Um, it helps me produce all these videos and keep making cool content for everybody. Um, you also get cool perks. Uh, you get early access to some of my class materials and videos, um, and you get discounts to my store. So um, really want to give a shout out to them and appreciate all of my members uh, for all the, the help you provide. Um, and with that, let's get started with the next video. So if you've watched my Stalgan 2 ADA, actually it's just the Stalgan 2 Deep Dive course, which is the five-week course, I think it was in May of last year, um, you'll notice that one of the things we talked about was GAN space, and we talk a lot about feature vectors. And feature vectors are very, very important to probably the future of GANs in the sense that like they're able to take a GAN and make them more interpretable. Um, you know, A common idea would be, I want to change an image from black hair to blonde hair, or from uh, you know, a little bit of stubble on the face to like a full beard, like those sort of ideas. Um, and that, that creates like a control that you can actually use instead of GANs, right? Because I think right now, if you just download style GAN and start playing with it, you can generate cool images, but you can't necessarily control how the images act. Um, one of the tools we looked at in that course was GAN space. Um, and in this video, we're going to look at a different tool, which is called closed form factorization. Um, similar idea, which is like, Based on the model, how do we take the weights that exist in that model and are able to figure out where like lines of features might be uh, standing out? So um, I've got a notebook set up, and I'll walk us through how to do that notebook, and then we'll look at some examples. Uh, this is one of the examples here. Okay, so uh, this notebook, um, I'll share a link to it in the video description. Um, it's fairly straightforward, um, and I think one of the challenges with something like GAN space is GAN space takes quite a while to generate. Um, right, generating those weights and then generating the videos and all those things uh, takes a little bit longer. I have found that closed form factorization takes a little bit less time um, in terms of just being able to run the mathematics to generate those uh, those weights of, that might be feature vectors. Um, it still takes a while to generate all the images, and if you're going to generate videos, it's also going to take a little bit of time. So it's still a bit of a challenge, but uh, it's a little bit easier, and I think it's worth exploring both. Um, you know, with both of these different mathematic operations, you probably get different vectors. Um, and it's worth sort of seeing, you know, which ones are better, which ones are less entangled than other ones, those sort of things. So this is the notebook. Um, at, I'm not going to run it because I've actually already run most of it just because I want to sort of show you what it produces and those sort of things. So at the top of the screen here, you just want to set up um, TensorFlow 1. Um, this is actually going to be using uh, StyleGAN 2 PyTorch, but we do have to convert the weights. So the first thing we're going to do is convert the weights, and that will require um, one of the NVIDIA StyleGAN models using TensorFlow. Um, so make sure you set that up top, um, and then we'll check to see what GPU you get. Uh, first thing you're going to do is you're going to install uh, the StyleGAN 2 PyTorch. Um, this is based on the Rosenality uh, PyTorch model. Uh, this is a fork of mine. Um, I've added some additional features into this fork, so maybe I recommend using this. Um, and as of this moment, it's uh, totally up to date with what Rosenality can do. Um, anytime you use the StyleGAN 2 PyTorch, you also want to install Ninja. Um, that's just a dependency required for this. Um, next, you in order to convert your pickle, um, I have another video on converting pickles to PyTorch weights, but if you're interested, this is sort of the process. Um, what we'll do here is we will download uh, either the StyleGAN 2 ADA model or the StyleGAN 2 model. Um, you can convert either weight. Uh, it doesn't matter. It works the same process, but you want to make sure that uh, if you have an ADA version that you're downloading um, this repo, and if you have a StyleGAN 2 model that is not ADA, um, you're downloading this repo. Next, you'll need to get your pickle file into um, Colab. Uh, in this case, one thing you can do is just straight up download, like if you want to download MetFaces and then convert it, you can. Um, or you can use GDown to download your own file. If you've not seen me use GDown before, um, I definitely recommend checking out some other videos. I have a description of how this all works here. Um, and lastly, we're going to convert our weights. Uh, so again, in this case, all you need to do is uh, pass in the convert weight script from the PyTorch model, and then you want to pass in whatever repo you're using. So if you're using ADA, you'll use this. If you're using um, just the vanilla StyleGAN2, you'll remove that and just use StyleGAN2. And lastly, you want to pass in what pickle file you, you want to run. Um, and then you want to say, you I, I don't know that you need to get the discriminator back, but you definitely want to get the generator, um, and it's probably good just to do both. Um, when you run this file, you will in fact get um, somewhere down here, you will get a file that is a .pt 
named version of your file. So here is metfaces.pkl, and when I ran this, I got a metfaces.pt as well as a metfaces.png. Um, you can look at the PNG to make sure it uh, converted well, but I've never really had an example where it converts incorrectly. So just be aware of that. Next, we're going to perform our factorization. So the first thing you need to do is actually just run this closed form factorization script, um, and you'll pass in the mets.pt file, and then pass in where the file, the factorization PyTorch file should be saved. Um, this saves out the weights. It's sort of similar to like a .mpy file with a bunch of vectors in it, that sort of thing. Um, make sure these are not the same name. Uh, you will overwrite stuff and that will get pretty messy. So uh, I generally what I'm doing is just naming, you know, whatever my model name is and then dash factor to make sure I'm, it knows I'm getting the factorization um, weights out of that. So from there, um, you've got some options. Now you can run uh, the actual uh, application of the factor. Um, what this takes in is, so uh, just so you know, what this is producing is producing a bunch of what we call eigenvectors. Um, I actually don't really understand the math of eigenvectors. It's, it's, a, feature, it's a feature vector, essentially. So you want to say which, uh, what index of that. So I actually don't know how many produce it produces, um, but basically go zero. Um, that'd be the first vector. Um, and I again, I think similar to GAN space, the zero vector should be the most important or the strongest uh, vector. Um, so vector zero. Um, how far do you want to go? This is the degree. Uh, this is, I, I would probably leave this at like four or five. You want it to be pretty strong just so you can sort of see the, the change um, between those and how many um, images you want to produce. So this is going to produce uh, a grid of uh, sort of three by whatever this number is. Um, and this will be the number of samples you're pulling from. This will generate a grid file. Um, it's sort of similar to this. Um, this is an example of, you know, uh, probably, well, what is it? It's index 13. Um, the uh, five number of samples, and then this is probably uh, positive five and negative five for the degree. Yep, degree 5.0, so yes. Um, so it's important to know what you're setting there. Um, if you set it to one, you might get some small numbers. If you set it to five or higher than five, you might get a bunch of noise. So it's kind of important to keep it within a certain range. Um, when you run this, uh, this will generate uh, a single image file that is uh, named you know, index zero, um, degree five, and then with the number of samples in that single image. Now, the additional thing that I added to this, which is something I really liked about GAN space, was that it was generating videos um, that would show a little bit of sort of like the animation. Because I think it's easier to understand the difference or changes over time in those animations. Um, so you can pass in, if you pass in dash dash video, um, that'll generate a video uh, of all these frames. And if you pass in dash dash vid underscore increment, that will tell you, that'll tell the machine how many increments or how many frames to produce of an animation, right? So if this is uh, a degree of five, um, basically what this does, is it starts at negative five and then it increments however many this is um, until it hits five and then it generates a video. So those videos will look a little bit like this. Not that, this guy. Um, so note these are a little noisy. I'm not sure why that is. I need to figure out a little bit more of an example about why that is. Um, but it will generate an animation. And one thing that I just like to do is sort of like, you know, quickly scrub between them just to try to understand like what's actually changing here. Um, I really couldn't tell you too much of what's changing here. I guess like he's getting a mustache. Um, face will just, so again, there's there's entanglement in these things. And that will always be the challenge with, with a lot of uh, feature vectors. But it is sort of helpful to sort of generate videos. So this will generate a video. Just know um, generating videos takes a, a little bit of time because um, you're sharing so many samples of images. Um, so I wouldn't necessarily go crazy with this. Like I would not set this to N100. Um, you'll be sitting here spinning your wheels for a while. Um, but I recommend playing with this single script first. And then once you realize, if you find that it works well, then you can use the second script here, which will uh, generate um, sort of a range. So you could do, let's say you wanted to start at index zero and you wanted to generate like a hundred of these. Um, I don't know if that actually worked. Oh, it did. Yeah, so you can generate 100 of these. Um, so you can run this script. Now, in this script, sometimes I turn off the video because, again, if you're producing five samples of video um, and you're producing that for 100 uh, index indices, um, that produces 500 videos, and they will be take you a while to download those. Um, so just be aware that like adding this in um, will definitely spend a lot more time during video. Um, but maybe you want to just run it all at once, and then later you want to watch it and sort of see what's happening. You can do that. Um, so what this will generate um, is a bunch of images. Uh, I turned video off here. And you'll see an example here of where it's generated every index um, from like 0 to 99. Uh, and then what I recommend doing is probably at the very end, 
um, you can just zip up the folder uh, using this script. So this will script this will generate a uh, a zip file of all of these images by just using the asterisk here as a wildcard um, to generate all these images. And then you can download it. It'll be a pretty large file, so we actually just want to move it to Google Drive. And then you can actually walk through these and just sort of see how each of these changes. Now, one thing that I sort of noticed in, in the Rosinale script is this does not have a seed, so it doesn't keep the same images every time. And maybe that's okay. Um, I think a future thing that I might do is add an additional feature. Um, to keep a random seed value just so that that way we always have the same images. I think that'll be a little bit easier to actually see what's changing there. Um, so I'm kind of excited to see that. And I have to tell you, I've been digging through these and like I feel like I understand like maybe one out of 10% of like what I see in each of these videos or in each of these grids. Um, it can be a real challenge to sort of decipher these. Um, I think this one looks like it's like making... I hate saying the word feminine, but it feels like it's making things a little bit more feminine. Um, you know, the the rosy cheeks. This one's funny because it's black and white and it has a little bit of rosy cheek. Um, you know, I initially thought maybe it was like where the eyes are looking. It does seem a little bit. But again, a lot of these things are so entangled that it's really hard to sort of decipher what these are. But these are really interesting and, and worth using, um, worth playing with and sort of trying to figure out like how you can manipulate these. Um, one thing I did notice is this is one that I just shared on Twitter uh, earlier today, which is this one's pretty clearly like it's really funny. It's actually like how tidy is the hair? So at this, it's like all wild style hair. Um, and then it's just maybe a little bit curly, wavy. And then here it's like straight hair, like really clean lines. Um, and someone mentioned it's also kind of entangled with uh, your age, right? So it's a little bit of like all these look younger than these. Um, so there are some really, really cool features available in these tools. Um, it can sometimes just take a while to sort of generate all these. So maybe it's even something you want to generate overnight. Um, if you don't have access to like uh, Colab, it's fun to sort of generate stuff overnight and then look at it in the morning. Um, you could also like set up a way to like actually save these directly to, to your Google Drive from Colab, and then you wouldn't have to worry about shutoff times or losing your files. Um, but I'll, I'll drop a list of, or drop this uh, notebook in here and have people play with it. I think it's a really cool tool. Again, I think it's like the the more feature visualization tools we have available to us, the more we can play with things, the more we can really dig into models and sort of decipher them. Um, so that's it for this video. I uh, just want to say thanks again um, to all my YouTube subscribers and members. It's a really helpful way to help fund me keeping doing these videos. Um, so if you have questions about this, feel free to drop a note on YouTube or in Slack, um, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.